So James Ragubeer says, hey k guy, will you do a video on if a car sub can be used for home theater? Well, let's try it. So the question is, can you use car subs for home theater? And when I think about that question, short answer is yes, you absolutely can. But I think the more, the bigger question is how or why do you even want to consider using a car sub for home theater use? So we're going to try to talk about that all today. Now there's different ways that you can go about using a car sub in your home. You can actually wire a car amplifier in your house and have tons of power that you wouldn't have otherwise with a traditional home theater subwoofer. But you can actually just build your own home theater box and use a car audio driver. Or maybe you have an existing home theater subwoofer and the drivers have gone bad so you want to swap out those drivers for car audio drivers. Well, we're gonna talk about all those options for you and maybe one of those is better and maybe even cheaper than going for a traditional home theater sub. So I actually love car audio. I have tons of car audio subs. This is an eight inch CT Sound Strato, eight inch subwoofer. This one down here is a 12 inch, much heavier <laughs> image dynamic subwoofer. And then I have a 15 inch sub in my car. There's another 12 inch sub in the closet. So I'm very familiar with car audio and their subwoofers. Let's talk about real quickly, what are the benefits of having a sub like this versus buying a traditional eight inch subwoofer from your local home theater store or online retailer? Now it's not always true, but more times than not, car audio subs are a lot more beefier and have better performance capabilities than a home theater sub. And that's because of their power rating, their power handling. Typically home theater subs don't really get much past 2,000, 3,000 watts max, but you can get car audio subs that are 7,500 watts, 6,000 watts, some crazy power. And that only means a lot of bass, low bass, SBL, a lot of volume you can get out of a car sub and that may be good for home theater if you have a huge room or you want impactful and I mean slam you in your chest base, you can do that with a car sub. They get typically a lot louder even though they're, they're filling a smaller area. Car audio bass is a lot more impactful than maybe home theater bases because of the difference in use. Now, like I said, this is an eight inch sub here, but this thing is a lot beefier than a lot of eight inch subs that you're gonna see on the home theater side. So something like this will be perfect for home theater because it's small, but it can still play relatively loud. So no matter what sub you get, whether it's home theater or it's car audio, you need some type of enclosure. And even an infinite baffle enclosure is still an enclosure. It may not have a backing to it, but it's sitting inside some type of panel and relies on the room as its box. So you need some type of enclosure when it comes to a subwoofer, both car audio and home theater. Check this little box out right here. This box was made to go with that 8 inch sub I was showing you guys. It has a port here on the, on the front, the driver here on the side, or however you want to orient this. And of course I painted it and made it look beautiful, right? So this can be kind of sized depending on you know, what driver you plan on putting it in. Car audio boxes can get tricky. You have to build them to spec. So you want to find the sub you desire and then build the box to match the sub. Believe it or not, home theater subs are made similarly. Each home theater sub, ported or sealed, has its specifications. You can't just put any driver inside any box and expect it to perform well. You can damage your sub if you put it in too big or too small of an enclosure. So you have to be careful on both sides. Now the benefit of something like this, I can put this eight inch sub inside that small box and I can hide it away behind my couch, put it underneath my gaming desk, or I can put it alongside my front speakers and have a nice 2.1 channel system, right? Which is what we're gonna do today in this video. I'm gonna use this sub as my example. I have other ones, but it's like 9.30 at night right now and I live in an apartment. So we're gonna use this sub to keep the volume down but we're gonna hook this sub up into this box and fire it up with my home theater and see how it keeps up. 
I'll show you what amplifier we're gonna be using and how I'm going to set it up. And maybe if you want to, you can find a car audio sub in a box and put one in your home theater. I promise you, you're gonna like it. So in my home theater, I actually have three subs already. And so I'm gonna turn all my subs off and we're gonna put this sub right here on top of this just to make things easy. Now, like I said, this is an enclosure made for the eight inch sub. Like I told you guys, you wanna match your sub and your enclosure size to make sure you get the optimal performance. So I now have my placement, right? And so this box has wiring on the inside. And if you guys notice, there's two sets of terminals on each side. So there's two binding posts here, two binding posts here. This allows you for different wiring configurations. I've made a video recently called what is ohms slash impedance, what that is. And this kind of goes hand in hand with that. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for you guys or the card above of talking about what ohms and impedances are because it's very important when it comes to car audio or building your own sub. So I'm gonna wire this actually to one ohm and I have an amplifier that's ready for that one ohm load. So I'm going to plug black to black and red to red, and then we'll plug it up to my amplifier. So when you're getting a subwoofer for your home theater and you're using a car audio sub, you wanna find some sort of amplification, whether that's external amplification, meaning it's not connected to the box, or you want a plate amp that typically is mounted to the box itself, its enclosure. Me personally, I have external amplification. This is the Crown XTI 4000. This is currently powering one of my subs in my home theater. I'm gonna use this same amplifier to power this small eight eight inch speaker. Now we gotta be careful because this is a lot of power. I think this can get up to over 2,500 watts to one single speaker. So we wanna be careful because my sub is not rated for this much. It's more like 800 watts or something in there. So pretty powerful, but not 4,000 watts powerful, right? <laughs> so we wanna be careful, but we do need to hook it up to the sub. Now remember, please refer to my ohm slash impedance video where we talk about um, ohms, ohms law, impedance, how to match your speakers with amplifiers. You wanna be careful because subs have different ratings, different ohm ratings. For example, my sub that we're using can either be wired in two ohms or one ohm. And this is rated for two ohms. We wanna be careful and make sure that we wire our speaker correctly inside the enclosure and to the amplifier itself. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the speaker wire and hook it up to the crown and we should be ready to roll. So I don't know how well that demo came through as far as the bass goes, but it does sound really incredible. And this is the first time I've ever done this in my home. So this was a test for both me and you guys. And I gotta say, it sounds actually a lot better than I thought. And being a car audio sub, this is an 800 watt, eight inch sub. You're not really gonna find an 800 watt, eight inch sub in the home theater world. I'm sure they're out there, but you're spending a lot more money than I did on this. This sub cost me maybe $800 or so right now. You can't find an 800 watt, $100 sub in the home theater world, it's not happening. So that's a benefit right there. You get a lot more power for the money. And look at this enclosure. It's not a very big enclosure compared to what it's sitting on top of. So you get all that power in a relatively small box. Now, don't be fooled, this actually had a lot of output. It was rattling the floor, which is what's really cool. Home theater subs have so much technology, like for example, this one down here, they don't vibrate. A lot of manufacturers put time into designing their cabinet so that it doesn't vibrate the floor or vibrate the cabinet itself. It's inert, right? But car audio, they don't care. We don't care about the car rattling or it's shaking through the seats. We want that experience. So you're gonna get that experience if you use a car audio box and sub combination in your home. I could feel this going right through the floor even though it was sitting on something else, which 
only added to the overall home theater experience. I love the feeling of it running through the floor, through my feet and in my body. And this is just an eight inch sub. So imagine what you can do with a bigger, more powerful sub. So that was a really cool benefit of having an eight inch car audio sub. I could feel it through the floor. Now, what if you have an existing home theater sub already? Like for example, my Rhythmic G25 HP. Let's say I blow my, my drivers, now my 15 inch subs don't work, or maybe I have kids and they poke a hole through the cone. Can I just replace these two drivers with a car audio driver? Well, yes and no. Yes, because you can find another 15 inch driver, take those out and put the new ones in, but you have to be careful. You wanna make sure that you match your speaker's size, make sure the depth fits inside the box. And then each box has its tuning frequency and its cubic feet. So your sub needs to be able to match with the size of your subwoofer, just like you would if you were using a car audio a uh, subwoofer box with a subwoofer combination. You have to match your sub with the box. So yes, you can replace your subs that are in your home theater box with car audio subs, but you gotta make sure you match up its specifications. So this test was a really fun video. Thank you so much to, uh, I forgot his name. I'll put, I'll put it on screen. Thank you so much for recommending this uh, video for me. This is a really cool experiment. I've never done this before. Uh, or I did a long, long time ago when I was younger, just messing around with audio, but it's been a while. This is the first time I've done it in my home theater. I do recommend, honestly, finding quality car audio subs and using them for home theater because you're gonna get a lot more output and a lot more power. You're gonna to need to find some way to power it, but you can really uh, have some serious slam in your home theater if you can use car audio subs. Now, some car audio subs are made for music. Some are made just to be loud. Same thing of home theater. Some home theater subs are made for music. Some are made for more home theater, home theater use. So you make sure you find a sub that suits your needs, but you can get a really nice car audio sub for a lot, a lot less than uh, a home theater subwoofer power to power comparison. So thank you again so much for the recommended video. Thank you guys so much for watching the video as well. Leave a comment, let me know, have you ever had a home theater or a car audio subs in your home theater? And if you did, did you have a car audio sub in a box or did you swap your home theater speakers out with subs from a car audio shop? What did you guys do? Let me know down below in the comment section what you think about this whole project. Hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already. We will see you guys in the next video. k Pace Guy out. Peace. You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down